It's Jeremy Shatton from An Earful. Welcome back to Discover Music with An Earful. This is monthly listening for December 2023. Last month of the year just passed. Thank you for sticking with me if you have for 12 months of the podcast. Obviously, there's a lot to look forward to in 2024, musically speaking at least. I think we can depend on there being a lot of great things. But there's still some stuff from December to catch up with. A few great releases, a few concerts, and of course, there is the top 25 albums of 2023 to talk about. When we come back, concert. The first concert we saw in December was on the 2nd. My daughter gave me tickets to see Tumberlin at Murmur Ballroom. I'm a lucky man indeed to receive such a gift. We are both fans of this wonderful singer-songwriter and had seen her open for John Cale earlier this year. She was wonderful then, backed by a trio. But at this show, which was her headlining show, her last one for the conceivable future, was a little more expansive and represented, I would say, more the sound that we hear on her last album, I Don't Know Who Needs to Hear This, a wonderful record that was in my top 25 for 2022. She had Adeline Stray on flute, clarinet, guitar, and vocals, a wonderful musician who had contributed a lot to the florist show we saw earlier this year at Music Hall of Williamsburg. David Sieri, a pianist who was on the album, and is unpredictable and adds a lot of expressive flavor. Frank Meadows, the bassist, and Josh Yeager, the drummer, were back, providing wonderful work in the rhythm section. And then there was a pedal steel player who also played violin, didn't catch her name. She was really great. It was a beautiful show coming together of people who are truly devoted to Tom Berlin, gave her a lot of support from the audience, including one moment when she was saying something insecure, and a man yelled out, Sarah Beth, you've grown so much as a performer. Every artist should have such an encouraging audience. The opening act was Dear Nora, otherwise known as Katie Davidson, performing solo. They have a quirky clipped style on guitar matched by intriguing songwriting. After the show, I went and listened to their album Human Futures from 2022. Really good stuff. I highly recommend it. I was glad to be introduced to Dear Nora. More to come in just a second. Then on December 15th, I headed out to Brooklyn Music Kitchen to see Nancy MacArthur. And it was worth the journey to a neighborhood in Cobble Hill, part of Cobble Hill I'd never been to before. I did see some fine Christmas lights on the way. It's very cheerful. But Nancy recently put out a fantastic album called I Would, I Were Thy Bird. I featured it in my A Song for Friday a few weeks ago. And it really is a great representation of her style. Beautiful voice, great acoustic guitar playing. Some of the songs have a full band and some don't on the album. And that was the same way it was in concert. But I was kind of thinking when she did the first song, which is called Sweet Fuck All, I thought, this is a star being born. She has great stage presence. And the band sounded fantastic. It was a big arrangement. I think she's going places. Now, I met Nancy at the Music Hall of Williamsburg for a Jonathan Wilson show in 2018. And she sent me some stuff back then. I knew she had a great album in her. And I'm so happy to finally have it. I was pleased to be at the release show. And I would definitely keep an eye out for Nancy. 
She has some European dates in the future and hopefully will play some more in New York when she comes back. She's Astoria-based and definitely worth the trip to Astoria if you're not already there. So that was a great show. And there's one more concert when we come back. I had to travel a little bit further than Brooklyn to see the last concert of 2023. This was the Talia Ensemble performing Georg Friedrich Haas's Solstices, a beautiful performance in an unusual place, PS21 in Chatham, New York, about a two hour drive from Manhattan. But the setting was perfect for an event that is supposed to take place starting at the solstice and even then in complete darkness. The darkness was pretty dark in the black box theater. And when the music started, I started to remember what the piece sounded like having seen it last year at the Domena Center. But just the act of having been in nature shortly before hearing it, I think transformed it a bit. Also, this is now the third time Talia is performing it for an audience and they just feel more comfortable and in the driver's seat there's a lot of improvisation or at least choices that musicians are allowed to make in Haas's conception it's a rich large ensemble piece with crescendos and spectral parts that really seem to kind of take you into a starlit universe It connects you to the change of the seasons in a way that I think should be a tradition. And it is right now for at least the last two years in my house. This work has never been recorded. It is supposed to be experienced live. I hope we do it again next year. I hope we do it in Chatham. And I hope you'll be there. Coming in a minute, recordings. The first album I want to talk about came out early in December. It is called Seagrass by violist Carrie Frey. Now, the name was familiar to me from a few albums, but especially Adrian Munden Dixon's album Lung, which was, spoiler alert, on my top 25 this year. On this album, Carrie plays a collection of solos by... Adrian Munden Dixon herself, Maria Kawazani, Emily Pretorius, Anthony Green, Buck McDaniel, Alec Goldfarb, and a piece by herself called Seagrass Slash Reed, which is the one that was featured on Munden Dixon's album. I'm going to play you a little bit of Koros by Maria Kawazani, and you'll get to hear not only a great technique, but a verve and grit and just a commitment to pushing her instrument forward. I really like this album a lot. Let's hear a little bit of it. Thank you. 
Wasn't that exciting? Carrie Frey from her album Seagrass, the song or the piece is called Koros by Maria Kawasani. The whole album is terrific. I have a little mea culpa, which is that my editorial departments got confused. The podcast department was not talking to the editorial department. And I seem to have left this album off my best of classical, which I published on the 31st. But it should have been there. It's a great album. I hope you get to it. I think she has a lot of style, grit, and an adventurous spirit. I hope you listen to Seagrass by Carrie Frey. And I also hope you listen to this next album, The Bird is an Alphabet, the latest portrait collection of Douglas Boyce's works. I've enjoyed his stuff in the past. Short version is you could say he takes a medieval approach to modernism, very into counterpoint and, and a lot of other structural things that come from the past, but the music is definitely modern. He's got three pieces on here, a book of songs, scriptorium, and Ars Poetica. These are all multi-movement pieces featuring vocalists and musicians. The first piece has a tenor and piano and has a really nice casual flair to it. The second piece, scriptorium, is the Byrne Kozar duo, who we've played on the podcast before, and this is recorded and written for them. Just a great piece. And the last piece is what we're going to hear a selection from, however. I feel Boyce has gone in a new direction by working with a poet, spoken word artist named Marlanda DeKine. And it's a really interesting combination of her spoken word with the ensemble Counter Induction, which consists of Nurit Pract on violin, Daniel LaPelle on guitar, and Caleb Vandersoir on cello. So let's hear a little bit of Ars Poetica. This is the opening movement, which is called Wilderness. <laughs> I wobble down a cobble road. I left a bottle of brown rum at the crossroads. My limp is getting fuller by the moon. I wonder who plotted this path, this map I make my life. I am swift as the spaceships behind my eyelids. Beauty finds me dappled in ecstasy I found by the magnolia outside. you are as intrigued by Douglas Boyce as I am. The Bird is an Alphabet, a terrific album. Get to it. Now this next album is by Leah Bertucci. And while this was a name I had heard before, I hadn't really fixated on what she was doing. And I think I have the algorithm to thank for delivering this into my release radar because the title track of Shadow and Substance is performed by a group including Matt Evans, the percussionist, someone whom I'm always interested in hearing what they have to do, what they have to play, what they have to say. Just one of the great musicians of our time, Matt Evans. Wouldn't mind another album from him in 2024. Let's see what happens. But until then, we have Of Shadow and Substance by Leah Bertucci, which consists of two long tracks. The first called Vapors for String Quartet, played excellently by the Quartetto Maurice. And the second is the title track, which is what we're going to hear. You'll listen to 
just an excerpt of how she builds up these layers of sound using the musicians almost as brushes on a canvas. So give a listen to Of Shadow and Substance by Leia Bertucci. Bertucci's of Shadow and Substance from her great album of the same name. It's deep, dark stuff, but somehow optimistic just via the sheer interest they generate and the enthusiasm they have for the music. Next, we have a side project, a new project. I'm not sure which, but it's Ryan Walkonski of the band Feeble Little Horse, who made one of the best albums of the year. Now, Feeble Little Horse's album, Girl with Fish, you would pretty easily slot it into kind of an indie rock category. But this new project called Aunt Katrina is a little bit more off the beaten path, even than that. But you can hear some of the sonic touchstones that Ryan must bring to Feeble Little Horse this almost electronic sounding guitar, in this case combined with more electronics and a very wide dynamic range. Anyway, here a little bit of Sunday from Aunt Katrina's debut album, Hot. Sunday by Aunt Katrina from their debut album, Hot. Actually, almost the whole song, which is a little under two minutes long. It's a brief album, but an impactful one. Looking forward to more from Ryan Walkonski and Aunt Katrina. Another connection I made recently was when I met H. Prues, Hannah Prusinski at Rough Trade, and learned about her band's sister and her own work under the name H. Prues. I saw her on tour with that name opening for Dead Gowns 
another artist I'd never heard of before. And I really wanted to go to the show when they came to New York, but I couldn't get there. However, I did make sure to check out Dead Gowns, just figuring it might be something I would like if H. Prews was opening for them. You know how it goes. That's often the way we find things. The opening act is a discovery. That Sometimes the headliner is a discovery. And it turns out to be great stuff. Really annoyed that I missed that show. The main element of Dead Gowns is Genevieve Baudouin, singer, songwriter of unique power. She has a voice that just commands attention, puts together great songs. She had written these songs and got a grant to record them, putting out an EP called How in 2022. Then she got some attention from a program of Vinyl Me Please, the Vinyl Record Club, to do something in their VMP Rising line. And she was able to record three more songs, so it's now a seven-track album. You can get it on vinyl, CD, or digital. And it's so good. The new songs are just fantastic. Give a listen to Kid One from How by Dead Gowns and tell me if you don't agree. was Kid One by Dead Gowns from the expanded edition, the VMP edition of their EP, How. I strongly recommend the whole collection. One thing I think is so impressive about it is they found the guitars to match the power of Genevieve Baudouin's voice. She's playing guitar. There's also someone named Luke Kalak who's helped her arrange and produce the songs. He plays guitar, baritone guitar, and synth. I also noticed that Nat Baldwin is on bass on some of these songs. And he used to be in Dirty Projectors, but has long been pursuing some pretty outre stuff. And I just found out that he put out a cassette earlier this year, collaborating with some other people that was produced by Weston Olensky, who we've talked about on the podcast before. It's all coming together. But either way, get to Dead Gowns. If you can't see them in concert, you can listen to the record. Next, and the last new track that we're going to feature in this podcast is a band called Buse. They are from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm actually not 100% sure how I found them, so it's not always a connection. But I had listened to their single earlier this year, and one called The Sun, and now they have an album out called One Day You'll See the Sun. It's really good. It's really noisy and also well-constructed. Now, when I say that, I'm going to play a bit of this song called Apocalypse Now, which is a six-minute song. And it took me a few listens to realize one of the things I was connecting to is the way they're using the guitars actually reminds me a little bit of Gordy from Killing Joke. And I don't say that lightly. And considering that he just passed it was kind of heartening to hear his influence. The guitarist names are Jack Pace and Josh Rubin. There's also Robert Lloyd on drums, Hayden Locke on bass and vocals, and Karina Telchert sings on one song as well. 
But the important thing is, listen to the guitars on this song. They really go out there. Apocalypse Now by Buse from their long-awaited, it says here, sophomore album, One Day You'll See the Sun. I should also say they describe themselves as freak core. I'll go with that. It's a killer song, killer album, definitely heavy on the loudness and noise, and I love it. Now, I've been teasing the top 25 a few times throughout this episode, so we're going to take a brief pause, and then when we come back, we'll get right into it. And we're back. Time to get to the top 25 albums of 2023. What a year for music. The best of the year so far, which I published in July, was such a great list that I almost didn't want anything else to come out. But other things did come out, and they demanded my repeat listening and shouldered their way onto the list. The ones that are now going to be featured on genre-specific lists are still fantastic albums. It's just too much good music. But let's run down the top 25. Starting with 25, The Thing. Here's The Thing, just a great rock album. Number 24 was The Record by Boy Genius, an album that brought together a lot of people. I saw it on a lot of lists, and I love that about it, but it wouldn't matter if it wasn't such a good record. Number 23, Escalation, Guilty Simpson and Uncommon NASA featured this fantastic hip-hop album on the podcast last month. Number 22, Geese, 3D Country. What a great band, so good live that it just made the album a necessity. Number 21, Leia Senior, The Music That I Make, Australian singer-songwriter, got to see her live, and it just made me love the album that much more. And that night, I heard Stella Cola for the first time. Their self-titled album is at number 20. A wonderful evocation of British folk and Appalachian folk. Number 19, previously mentioned, Girl with Fish by Feeble Little Horse. Such a great record. Number 18, Everyone's Crushed by Water From Your Eyes. Got to see them live and just made me fall head over heels with what they were doing. So good. And there's the remix album, Crushed by Everyone, too. You got to listen to that. Number 17, Lung by Adrian Munden Dixon. A emotionally captivating album of solo violin music. Number 16, Stephen Vitello and Bill Seaman, The Clear Distance. What a gorgeous, gorgeous album. Number 15 was Earthling on the Road to Self-Love by Baby Cool. 
Number 14, Coincident by Scott L. Miller and Zeitgeist on the cutting edge of music. Number 13, Youth Lagoon, Heaven is a Junkyard. I'm surprised I didn't see this on more lists. It's such a deep, emotional album that's, it feels precious. And I urge you to listen to it. Number 12, one of my favorite artists of the 21st century, Gecko Turner, somebody from Badajoz. Anna St. Louis at number 11 with her sophomore album, In the Air. I just found that on vinyl. I'm so psyched. Beautiful record. Number 10, the great Anna Thorvalds Dautier, Arcara and Aeon. What an incredible album of symphonic music. Number nine, Ilana Lowe, Petrik Sora, the album I've been waiting for from her ever since I first heard her sing. Number eight, the wonderful Eric D. Johnson and Fruit Bats, A River Running to Your Heart. Number seven, The Astonishing Mechtilds by Reiko Futing. What a miniature opera that is impenetrable and wondrous. Number six was Lael Neal with Star Eater's Delight. Also got to see her live this year. She is just fantastic. There's going to be more to come from her. And number five really caught me by surprise. Voir Deer by Earl Sweatshirt and The Alchemist. I tried to get this on the podcast. You'll just have to go listen to it elsewhere. They just wouldn't respond to my emails. I don't know why. But it's so, so good. Now what we can do is we can get into playing some songs for the top four starting with Mutual Benefit. I've talked a lot about Mutual Benefit on the show, even played part of a song. Let's hear part of a different song this time. This one is called Little Ways, and it's coming now. Mutual Benefits, Little Ways, from my number four album of the year, Growing at the Edges. So, so good. I had to make the excerpt so you could hear Johnny Baker's guitar solo. At least I think that's Johnny Baker from Florist. It's such a good little guitar solo. I love it. Tells a story. Number three, you're going to hear an excerpt from Omar Ahmad's Inheritance. Here is Signet Song.
Signet Song from Omar Ahmad's Inheritance, my number three album of the year. Number two album of the year is Ceremony by Tiny Ruins, another Australian artist. So fantastic. Holly Fulbrook, one of the great songwriters of our time. Let's hear a track from Ceremony and You Will Melt. As I walk up the passage, I see you moving down a whole afternoon in your hands, but I can't come back round. You take your time to speak to me, and what you say rings true. It was an own goal anyway. When I laid into you. position and our time how to face in our position and our time how to face in our position and our time was Out of Phase from Ceremony by Tiny Ruins, my number two album of the year. So, so good. The number one album of the year, about which I said, is it possible for a band to make their best album 30 plus years into their career? And I think they answered that in the affirmative. I could only be talking about the clientele with their album, I Am Not There Anymore, an astonishing double album that finds them doing everything they do best and more, things you didn't think they could do. It's just a wonderful record. They made a new fan, a friend of mine on Facebook. It was so great to see. He'd given up on British guitar bands, he said, and then he heard the clientele. Now he's going to go see them in concert next month, or maybe it was this month, somewhere in the UK. Lucky man, I missed them this time around. They are fantastic live. Give a repeat listen to Garden Eye Mantra from the clientele. Garden Eye Mantra from the number one album of 2023, I Am Not There Anymore by The Clientele. I'm not done with 2023 yet, however. There will be genre-specific lists to come. I've already published the best of 2023 classical, and upcoming will be electronic, hip-hop, R&B, and reggae, 
Latin Jazz and Global, and Rock, Folk, Etc., followed by Out of the Past, featuring reissues. There were a few good ones this year. But I'm also really excited about upcoming albums in 2024, including albums I already gave an advanced look at in my A Song for Friday posts, which I'll start up again this week. Song for Friday featured Pet Wife and Or Best Offer, who will both have albums out this year. Really excited about both of them. I've heard them. They are excellent, fantastic stuff that you're going to want to hear. So make sure to keep up with what I'm doing. And I appreciate you so much for listening to all the great music we've shared. Everything you've heard has been ethically sourced from the artists and labels. Many thanks to them. I've forged many relationships through this podcast, and I appreciate every one of them. You can find links to everything in the show notes, including a playlist. And the interstitial tracks are by me with my Casio and my bass and occasionally Andy Gilchrist on guitar. Thanks, as always, to The Droplets, Holly Miranda, Am Parsley, and Chris Maxwell for my theme song. And find me at anearful.substack.com as well as all the socials, including Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, even Blue Sky and Threads. Please share, rate, and review this podcast. That is the only way we can grow this movement to reveal the finest music of our time. Thanks again for listening. This has been Discover Music with an Earful for December 2023. Here's to more great music in the coming months. See you next month.